Do you think that there is even a 1% chance that consciousness could outlive death? Mm, no. I think there's a much less than 1% chance for that to happen. I think everything that we know points in the direction of consciousness for each of us, each individual, being totally dependent on our brains being basically intact and, and, and alive. Once our brains stop, we stop. And I, th something like general anesthesia is such a, a powerful window onto this because it's basically the closest we can get to death without dying. And consciousness stops. And it's not just like sleep. When we're asleep, we're always aware of some time having passed. We might be confused if we're jet lagged or, or ill or something, but, but we know it's been some number of hours. But under anesthesia, you are just not there. You, know, you go under and then you're back and no time seems to have passed at all. And the bit in the middle is a premonition of the oblivion, I think, that death uh, brings. And I want to just say something else here, because I, I don't think this is a particularly depressing view either. Some people might think it's depressing if, if, you're, if you're clinging on to some possibility of, of immortality. But there's a weird asymmetry that we have with respect to not existing. We don't generally tend to worry that much about all the time we weren't there before we were born, which is you know many billions of years, and certainly in human existence, hundreds of thousands of years. But we're much more worried about the time after we die. So there's this odd, it's, in a way, it's, it's somewhat justified because you know, things that happen after we die, we've had some influence on, whereas we, by definition, haven't had any influence on things before we were born. But still, you know, the idea that oblivion is, is inherently scary, I think is... I think we're just not looking at it right. I mean, there, there's a quote I use in the book, which which is a, a title of a novel by Julian Barnes, and which is all about mortality, and it's called "Nothing to Be Frightened of." And I love that because it's it's you know, it's got this beautiful double meaning to it. Yeah, we're all frightened of nothing, but really, there's nothing to be frightened of. Very very well said. Um, there's a, a, an idea for consciousness after death. There's also the idea of a soul or a spirit. Is there kind of any distinction to be made by there, or do you think they're kind of one and the same? No, I think there's some really interesting distinctions. And here, I think there's there's a lot of mileage to be gotten in in actually close reading of of different cultures about their beliefs about death and, and the soul and so on. Because I think certainly in the West, there's this idea of the soul which is actually quite a recent idea of, of you know, something that, that maintains the essence of you as a person and maintains essence of personality and that could survive you know, the death of the body. But in, in other religions and even in, I think in Christianity in, in previous era, in eras, these aspects of the soul, they weren't so prominent. And it's just there's, there's something, you know, it points to some sort of like consciousness force as if there might be a life force that animates living things. And in Hinduism, half my family's Indian, and the concept of soul there is, is Atman. And it's much more closely tied with breath than with, let's say, rationality, as, as it often is in the West. You know, so, so the West, we have this, this idea of the mind being separate from the body. You know, Descartes, again, to blame for this problem <laughs> of dualism. Um, but in Hinduism, there is still this idea of transubstantiation, that there is this you know, survival after death of, of but it's not supposed to be the survival of that particular person you know it's it's something much more general now i don't agree with that either but what i do like about that concept of soul is how it's tied to something much more fundamentally biological the breath and in my own thinking about this and it's interesting because it's not somewhere i expected to end up now i think that's one of the nice things about this this area of research is that you 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 realize that your ideas change 
as you do more. And of course they should, because it would be really boring if you just ended up thinking exactly the same thing after 20 years <laughs> as you did at the outset. So in, in hindsight, of course it's a good thing. But you know, the place I didn't expect to end up was this recognition that the most fundamental levels of what it means to be a human self and, and probably a non-human self as well are connected with how the brain perceives the regulation of its body to be going. And this is something that goes right down into individual cells almost. You know, the, brain, the, the purpose, the, the reason we have brains, the reason evolution endowed any organism with a brain is, is not to write poetry or solve crossword puzzles, it's to keep the body alive. And when we try and articulate what it might feel like at the sort of experiential level when the brain is doing this it's just this sense of how good a job the brain is at keeping things going physiologically well that might be as close to the experience of in you know of being a soul as i can think and it's and it's surprisingly aligned with some of these other ideas of soul as connected with with our you know our imperative, our biological imperative to stay alive with these fundamental biological rhythms that maintain us, that keep us from sort of dissolving into mush. And, and that's, I think, it's something that I, I'd love to spend uh, more time thinking about, actually, because it is, it, is, it is true that we, we inherit these intellectual traditions, whether we realize it or not, particular assumptions we make about the nature of consciousness, the nature of self, the nature of soul. And I think there are ways to, to bring them together where science and sp some of the more spiritual traditions can complement each other.